Hi everyone, it's Rob at ASFC Chemistry and I'm just going to take you through very briefly using my molecules. I'm going to take you through how we decide whether something is a polar molecule or a non-polar molecule. But before I do that, we need to have a quick look at electronegativity. Now, electronegativity lets us know how powerful an element is at withdrawing the electron uh, pair in a covalent bond more towards itself. The further to the right we are on the periodic table, and so up and towards fluorine here, then the more electronegative an element is. We don't consider the values of electronegativity for the noble gases because they don't regularly form covalent bonds, although krypton does make a few exceptions of that. So up here then, fluorine is our most electronegative element that we're going to consider, and the other two most electronegative elements that we um, encounter are oxygen and nitrogen respectively. So whenever we see fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen or any two different elements in a bond with each other, we can normally consider that bond to be polar or to have a dipole. The only exception to that is the CH bond. At A level, we consider the CH bond to be non-polar. That's because the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is so small that we don't consider that. There are other uh, bonds in chemistry, other structures that have bonds with different elements where they are very similar in electronegativity, but you aren't expected to memorize all of those. To be fair, no one is. So, what happens when we have two different elements in a bond then? What happens with those electrons? Well, they shift and move towards the more electronegative of the two elements. So if I take this molecule of water, for instance, so we've got an oxygen and two hydrogens. The oxygen is going to pull the electrons in the bonds more towards itself. And that gives the oxygen a partially negative charge. Not fully, because it's not taking the electrons away. It's not accepted those electrons. It's just pulling them towards itself like a tug of war. We say the oxygen then has less than one electron's worth of charge. And so we give it a delta minus. Not quite a full minus, it's less than one electron. Okay, so what if we have a molecule where we're not quite sure 100% straight away whether it contains polar bonds or not, if it's going to be a polar molecule or not? Well, if we take the water molecule once more, we can see we've got delta pluses down this end of the molecule with our hydrogens, and we've got delta minus over the top. Now, because the water molecule isn't symmetrical at this angle, we've got this nice delta plus here and delta minus here, which means that overall the water molecule is going to be polar. So water is often referred to as a polar solvent, and that's because a molecule of water is polar. We can say in short that the dipoles do not cancel. There isn't a delta minus pulling in the same direction with the same amount of force as another delta minus on this side. So the dipoles aren't cancelling. A plus and a minus in this case isn't a cancel. So, what about other molecules? What about molecules that contain carbon, for instance? Well, if we were to look at this molecule here, this could be tetrachloromethane. Now, tetrachloromethane is a carbon bonded to one, two, three, four different chlorines, and the shape is tetrahedral. Now, looking at this, we would expect the CCl bond to be a polar bond. So the carbon would be delta plus and the chlorine would be delta minus. But because this is a three-dimensional structure where all the chlorines are equally spaced from each other, the bond angle is 109.5, remember, then there is an equal pull in all directions on the pairs of electrons. And so here, the dipoles in all directions are cancelling each other out. But what about a very similar formula structure? What about just chloromethane? So this has just got one chlorine there, and then these white ones represent the hydrogens. Well, looking at these, the CH bonds are non-polar, remember, as we said at the start of this video. And we've got the chlorine here, which is going to be very delta minus and leaving the carbon with a bit of a delta plus. Now, this end of the molecule at the moment, then, this is very delta minus. But down here, there isn't much dipole activity at all. There's no charge, no partial charge down here. And so this molecule is a polar molecule, whereas the one we were looking at before, the tetrachloromethane, is a nonpolar. 
Here, this is a polar molecule because the dipoles do not cancel, just like the example of water earlier. I hope that clears up a couple of structures for you. Your top tip for this is to look to see if any of the dipoles are being cancelled out. So if there is the same dipole facing on the other side of the molecule, that normally means there is a cancelling out. I hope that clears up any questions you have about bond polarity or if we expect a molecule to be polar or not. If not, then uh, let me know via the comments or you can tweet us at ASFC underscore chemistry. Otherwise, happy revising.